Hello and welcome to a video tutorial on interfacing mockup net BVH output with make human skin human avatars and a Blender 3D editor. Mockupnet is a project that started as my PhD thesis and which can convert RGB video streams to 3D BVH output in real time using an ensemble architecture of neural network encoders. At the time of making this video, there have been three milestone versions with the third one now supporting both hand and body tracking. From its conception, Mockupnet was designed to directly regress BVH output in order to be directly integratable with existing 3D engines and open standards like the BioVision hierarchy or BVH format in an effort to democratize motion capture. Currently, motion capture solutions typically require expensive suits or even more expensive multi-camera and tracker systems that are complex, bulky, and most of all expensive, with costs ranging from thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars depending on the hardware. Although, in terms of visual fidelity, MocapNet is still lacking, being able to run real-time in CPU on off-the-shelf computers along with its direct BVH compatibility makes it, I think, a worthwhile effort which also seems to be very important in the context of virtual reality applications. As part of my MocapNet implementation, except the neural network training and runtime, I have written from scratch both a BVH and OpenGL compatible rendering engine along with my own 3D model format and linear algebra library, all in C and spanning tens of thousands of lines of code. However, these are admittedly difficult to use even for seasoned programmers, let alone game developers or CGI artists. Due to the recent changes in the Make Human Code, specs, exporting tools, etc., they are also imperfect. Having said all that, and since the video is a very common issue request on the MockupNet repository, this is it, the official tutorial on how to render a 3D skinned human using Blender using the output of MockupNet. To follow the steps of this tutorial, you will need a recent version of Blender, Pass 3.4, that you can easily download from blender.org, a recent version of the MPFB2 Blender plugin, which is a plugin that seamlessly integrates most of the functionality of the Make Human inside Blender. You can download it by visiting makehumancommunity.org and following the links there, or by cloning the MPFB2 repository on GitHub, or see the Make Human MPFB2 video uh, on YouTube. Finally, you need a recent version of MockupNet. It should be noted that due to lack of manpower, Currently, to get hand tracking version, uh, you need to clone the MockupNet 3 branch. You need a video file that you will have to process through MockupNet and grab the resulting out.bvh file. And now, to begin with the actual tutorial. We open Blender, delete the default cube, select the MPFB2 version 2 plugin from the side panel, select a new human which we will make from scratch. We will make the new human uh, be a female, young, with an average phenotype. We will use meters as the scale and we click create human to create a new object. We inspect our new skeleton and see that it is bold and textureless, so we proceed to add more assets. We select a skin color. Trying to extend the model at this point is impossible since without a rigged skeleton, new meshes like eyes cannot be included. We thus need to add a rig. We select Add Rig from the Rigging submenu and select the default rig with Toes to make our wood work future-proof, since toe tracking is a feature that I hope someday to incorporate on MockupNet. Having a rig, we can now add eyes. We choose low poly eyes to keep triangle counts low. We add eyebrows, eyelashes. Teeth, a tongue. We can finally add some hair to make the model less intimidating. At this point, we have a beautiful and fully animatable model to work with. To 
test it, we can use the MPFB2 load pose functionality to make it stand at the T-pose. We are now done with the human model and can continue with importing the BVH output file of MockUpNet. We click File, Import, Motion Capture BVH and select our output file which by default is named out.bvh. Since we selected meters for our human body, we can select 0.01 to convert the centimeter scale BVH output to meters and have compatible size. By clicking import BVH, we add the BVH armature which is initially completely independent from our generated armature. We now have two independent objects in our scene which need to be linked in order for our 3D model to move accordingly to our BVH file. We click scripting to activate the Blender scripting view where, in order to link them, we need to use the provided Python script in the repository. After locating it on our system disk, under the mockup net root in src python blender directory with the name blender underscore mockupnet.py, we click open on blender and select it, opening it. To run it, we click on the play symbol which execu executes it, adding the mockupnet bvh animation helper tab on object properties. The default human rig is called human.rig and the BVH name is out, so we need to provide this information to the BVH animation helper. After selecting out as the source and human.rig as the target, we can now link the armatures with using just one click. There are three buttons provided. The automatic one links upper, lower and hands. Upper body links only the upper body, as well as an experimental facial linker button. In our case, the source video just had the upper body available, so to save us the trouble of cleaning the lower body, we can just click upper body. Immediately, the 3D model becomes animated and starts following the animation frames of the BVH file. That's it! In a matter of few clicks, we have successfully created a virtual human avatar and animated it using an RGB video source and mockup. Blender has a lot more functionality that is however outside of the scope of this video. However, it's very easy to learn the basics and just adding a few meshes can uh, get you a long way. Thank you for watching this video. Please note that despite the infrequent GitHub updates, the project is actively maintained. Unfortunately, the size of the code base is very large for a single developer, and having to wait for publication double blind peer review periods to end makes releasing new versions very slow. Hopefully, you find this video useful. Have fun experimenting with MockupNet.